Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to walk you through an example of using nested loops to simulate a 24-hour clock. So what do, I, what do I mean by that? Okay, I mean this right here. All right, so you see we've got three positions in here. We've got an hours, we've got a minutes, and we've got a seconds, right, separated by those colons. And, you know, everything's being written on the same line. Okay, and what we have is we have three loops that are all nested inside of each other. Okay, we got a loop for the seconds, and that is inside of a loop for the minutes, and then that in turn is inside a loop for the hours. Right, so let's go ahead and see how we can build that and how we can use nested loops to um, make this happen. Okay, so I already got my Visual Studio going. Right, so I'm gonna need to have three fields of two characters that are gonna be separated by a colon. So to do that, I'm gonna to need to use an IO manipulator, set W, okay? And I want the default characters in each of those fields not to be a space, but to be a zero. So I'm gonna use cout.fill and I'm gonna specify that we use the character zero instead of the default space, okay? Now, best way to work with loops or a really good way to work with loops is to build your loops from the inside out, okay? So what, is, what does that mean, okay? Well, if I wanted to display something, okay? So I wanna display some seconds, okay? In, you know, a number of seconds in a field that's two characters wide, I would do something like this, okay? So we'll say seconds, okay? And uh, I'd have to define my seconds variable, of course. And we'll set it to zero, okay? So if I can do this once, let's go ahead and test my code and see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see there's the two zeros. If I could do that once, then I can do it over and over and over again, right? So I'm just going to put this statement in the body of a loop, okay? So I'll use for loops in this video, but the principles hold for, you know, other types of loops as well. So we'll move the seconds into here, okay? And I want to count 60 seconds from 0 through 59. So so long as seconds is less than 60 increment seconds okay so now we're going to show this right we're going to show this thing we're going to repeat this statement right here 60 times okay now you're going to see that it's not exactly finished yet you see how it all appeared on one line remember i told you that we we're going to have you know that it just showed all the numbers right just this gross thing not like what, what we saw at the very beginning of the video so what we're going to do is we're going to use an escape sequence backslash r which is carriage return which just moves the cursor back to the end of the line so basically what's going to happen is is um, we're going to write zero zero on the screen and then we're going to move the cursor back to the beginning and then it's going to overwrite the zero zero with zero one the cursor is going to go back to the beginning overwrite the zero one with zero two and so on so let's see that Okay. You might not be able to see it too quick because it's going to fly by really fast, right? So it went from 0 to 59 like that uh, because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a for loop, right? And there's not that much stuff that we're, that we're printing out. I'll do it one more time. Okay. So now we know that this works, right? We know that it's going to put everything on one line. It's going to count from 0 through 59. Fine. Okay. Now I just want to repeat that again, right, for minutes. So this is for seconds. So for every minute, I want to have, you know, a count of 60, 60 seconds, right? So I got to repeat that for 60 minutes. So I have to repeat this whole thing of counting 60 seconds for 60 minutes. Okay, so this is just a statement, just like the C out was a statement. I want to repeat this whole thing right here 60 times, right? Once for each minute in an hour. So that in itself will become part of a loop for int minutes equals zero minutes less than 60 minutes plus plus okay so we will put the loop in a loop 
Okay, so this is four minutes. Okay, so now we have to put an entry here for our minutes so that it shows up. Set W to minutes, and we want a separator. Okay, and I'll put these on separate lines here so that way you can keep seeing them. Okay, so let's try it. And you should see a little bit more. It should be easier to see what's going on because now we're going to have 3,600 repetitions. Right? So now we can see it doing its thing. Right? So you can see that the seconds, now it speeds, it speeds up. Um, the machine was a little laggy there. But uh, for every cycle of the 60 seconds, we have a minute get incremented. Okay? So that's the inner and outer loops working together. Right? So for each minute, we have 60 seconds that runs by, right? And each one of those seconds, we display what minute it is and what second it is, okay? So that's an example of nested loops, but we're not done yet because we still need the hours place, right? So all of the seconds have to be repeated for all of the minutes, but all of that has to be repeated for 24 hours, okay? So for Mint hours equals zero. Hours less than 24. Hours plus plus. So we want to repeat all of that. Okay, for each hour. Oops. Uh, four hours. Okay, and then let's put our hours value in here. and our separator. Okay. So now let's try that. So so this inner loop is going to execute 60 times. Right? And that itself is going to get repeated 60 times for this minutes loop. And then all of that is going to be repeated 24 times for the for loop. Okay? So we just built one loop on top of each other. So let's go ahead and try it and see what we see what we get. Success, right? So for every yeah, I've, I've, I've beat, I beat that to that. But for, you know, for every sixty seconds, you know, for every minute we get sixty seconds, and for every hour we get sixty minutes, which in turn gets us sixty seconds. Okay, so um, that's kind of the basics of how that works. Now, the question becomes, how many total repetitions are we dealing with? I mean, look at how long this is going to take a while. We could sit here and watch this for a second because there's a ton of repetitions, right? So, as it turns out, it's multiplicative. Okay, so if you've got sixty seconds, right, sixty repetitions for this loop, and then this then this loop repeats sixty times, you multiply them by each other and then similarly for the 24 hours okay so let's look at the math for that so total repetitions there's 60 repetitions in the second loop times 60 repetitions for the minutes loop times 24 repetitions for the hours loop gives us a total of 86,400 repetitions so you can see why we could actually see stuff and why it took so much longer once we did that because it's multiplicative, as I was saying. So there you go. What did we talk about in this video? Well, we had an example of nested loops and how you can use them to build something interesting, right? What's a nested loop? It's just a loop inside of a loop, okay? And the total number of repetitions is gonna be multiplicative. So the inner loop, times the outer loop is going to be the total number of repetitions that you get. All right. So if you're a student of mine, you have any questions about that, feel free to email me, stop by my office hours, hit me up on Zoom. For everybody else, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up if you thought the video sucked. Well, it's got that thumbs down button there for you as well. Consider supporting the channel in multiple ways. We've got super thanks. We've got uh, memberships with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell so that way you know when new videos 
uh, are posted. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.